Good morning. I'm Jason Scorza, Associate Provost for Global Learning at Fairleigh Dickinson University. I'm pleased to welcome you to the 2008-2009 UN Pathways Video Conference Series held in conjunction and collaboration with the Ambassadors Club at the United Nations. Today we will be joined uh, by Lockhaven, Lehigh, Montclair uh, uh, High School, and the topic for discussion will be crises in poverty, alleviation, and food supplies. Uh, I think it's significant that the title is Crises, not Price Is, uh, for as we'll see during our discussion, uh, the uh, food supply uh, issue looks very different depending on which part of the globe you're standing. I'd like to turn over our proceedings to Ambassador Ahmed Kamal at the United Nations. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you. Uh, and an even greater pleasure to have as our distinguished panelist, uh, Mr. Muthu Kumaru, who is the director of the United Nations Development Program and an expert on all matters relating to the economic map of the world. And that is really what we are going to try uh, to get our uh, fingers on today. Uh, with your permission, thank you very much for coming. Uh, with your thank permission you, you. and with yours, I'd like to lead into the subject myself in order to define the parameters of the discussion. <clears throat> the mantra at the United Nations is something called poverty alleviation, something which apparently is more important than the war on terror. In other words, it is the war on poverty that preoccupies us at the United Nations because more people are killed by poverty than by anything else in the world. Now, poverty frequently is defined in terms of money. Uh, and we know the statistics. The statistics are depressing. <clears throat> they are that about one-fourth of the world is living on less than one dollar a day. One-fifth of the world. One dollar a day total. One-fourth of the world is living on less than $2 a day. One-third of the world is living without access to safe drinking water. Now, water is important because water is the carrier of all waterborne diseases. And so the fact that money is being used as an indicator is not a question of money itself but the fact that money buys you a number of things. Money buys you health, first of all, because it buys you medicine, access to medicine, access to doctors, etc. Money buys you food, <clears throat> which means that you have nourishment. Money buys you education, which means that you get a better standard of living as you grow up. And so if you do not have money, or if you have limited money, then it is not poverty, in other words, is not poverty of money. It is poverty of opportunity. And ultimately, what poverty means is least opportunity and early death. <clears throat> now, three quarters of the world is going through some form of poverty. And that is an indicator of the size of the crisis. In other words, it's not a minor crisis affecting minor pockets somewhere. It is something affecting the majority population of the world. And so it is something critically important. Now, we know from experience that there are three and only three solutions to poverty. They are, the first is ODA, which is Official Development Assistance, which is money given by governments into a pot in the middle of the table, and then that critical mass of money is to be used for developmental purposes and po poverty alleviation by whatever means, whether World Bank or by natural <coughs> or whatever. <clears throat> we know that the second uh, methodology is FDI or foreign direct investment, meaning actual investment by the private sector in schemes which create jobs <clears throat> and therefore alleviate poverty. <clears throat> and the third <coughs> and most successful way is something called trade, which is 
that you do not have to make an effort. You just produce whatever you can best produce. I produce what I can best produce. This is what is called the quote-unquote competitive edge. And then we trade. And in the process, you are happy, I am happy, both of us make a profit at minimal expense. Now, all these three solutions, ODA, FDI, and trade, have come up against major obstacles and are not working. And that is the problem of poverty. Now, let nobody tell you that poverty is decreasing in the world. Poverty is increasing in the world. Most of us think that we are better off than our parents. And that is perhaps true in small pockets in the West. But in the rest of the world, the total statistics about poverty are all increasing, except in China and perhaps in India. And so we have to attack this problem. It is not just a crisis which sets off a snowball of other events, including frustration. And frustration, in turn, then creates other events, some of which may end up in terrorism. And so poverty is a major incentive for deterioration. But the second thing is that we talk all the time about human rights. And human rights is another mantra which has overtaken us, that we are all <coughs> focused on something called human rights. But poverty is by far the greatest violation of human rights. And therefore, if we are doing nothing to alleviate poverty, then we become the greatest violators of human rights in the world. That is the debate at the United Nations. And the question that I would like to ask of Mr. Mutukumaru is, you are in charge of all this. You're supposed to be ensuring that I have a better future. And I want to know whether you're up to your job or not. Am I going to be condemned to early death and absolute poverty? Or is there some hope for me at the end of the tunnel because of efforts, whatever efforts you are making or likely to make? And should I begin digging the rest of my grave? Or should I uh, have uh, some sort of a future uh, in the days that are left to me? All yours, sir. Good morning. Uh, let me first also just clarify my function within UNDP. I, uh, as I am within the United Nations Development Program, I'm responsible for the partnerships angle of UN United Nations Development Program. And, to and, explain what is a and I just want to explain to you what the UN United Nations Development Program first is as the organization, as, as an intrinsic part of the UN system. We are the main development arm of the United Nations system. We are responsible in terms of the broader concept of development and the economic social side for the UN system. At the country level, we, have, we work in 166 countries, developing countries of the world. We have offices in about 136 countries. We coordinate on behalf of the Secretary General all development activities at the country level. That means be it UNICEF, be it WHO, FAO, and the other parts of the UN system. We, as UNDP, at the same time focus on four major areas. One is poverty alleviation. The second is environment and energy. The third is democratic governance. And the fourth is crisis prevention and recovery. They're very broad areas. Those are the four areas that we focus on and concentrate on in addition to our role and function as the coordinator for UN development activities at the country level. So as Ambassador Kamal just mentioned, we play a major role in bringing the UN system together to address some of these key issues that are facing the world today. Let me, let me sort of address, I think, as all of you know, we are in a very dire situation in the world today. It's not a couple of problems. We have quadruple problems. Name it. You have the food crisis. Poverty issue is there, and we'll come back to that. You have a huge issue in terms of the food crisis. You have an energy situation, too, 